Hey there, it's Carrie G at Studio R12 Stencils and today we're gonna show you how to add a little bit of color to your decor and how easy it is to paint a DIY sign for your porch. Okay, let's dive right in and start prepping our surface to paint. So when you paint on a pine surface, you're going to have lots and lots and lots of knots on your surface that if you don't cover up with something, they will bleed through. We have a project that we did in the past before we knew any of this. We base coated it white and you can see all of the knots that have bled through over the years. So then we found this bullseye shellac. And what we will do with it is we will just stick our paintbrush into the shellac and then we will just paint the shellac over top of all of the knots on our surface. This is gonna be a little sticky for a while, so you'll want to make sure that you let it dry completely before you start to paint over your base coat. You can let it dry naturally, you can take a blow dryer over top of it, but this will help prevent the bleeding through once you get your base coat on. Now there might be some times that you want the bleed through. If you're going to add a stain to your project rather than a paint, then you won't need to waste the time doing the covering because those knots will cover, will pop through anyway. So as we get ready to base coat this project, we are going to base coat it today in white. We are going to use an acrylic paint. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can do it with a roller or you can do it with a poly foam brush. The poly foam brush works very well, but it also takes a really long time. So today we are going to use the roller. I'm gonna get out a lot of paint here. These are long signs, they are six feet long and they are 12 inches across. So it's gonna take quite a bit of paint to get this on here. Now it takes a little bit of time when you are first prepping your roller to get the paint soaked in, but once you get a good amount of paint on there, then you'll be good to go for your project. So we're just gonna take our roller and go over top of it and go from top to bottom. Now, one thing you are going to want to be mindful of is when you get to the edges, you want to make sure that your roller is not going over the edge if you don't actually want the sides of your project to be white. On this one, we have left it neutral because on the other side of our project, we have a, another sign painted. So that's something that you'll want to think about when you are picking your signs and picking your stencils is if you, if you can do them on both sides and then you will get double the use out of your wood. Now, as I'm doing this, you can hear it kind of bouncing around. This board actually was not flat. Um, it came that way when we got it from the hardware store. And I think I painted the other side of it a while back and now I remember that that's actually why I painted that side first because that side laid down a little bit more flat. But when it's standing up, it's not really going to cause that many, many problems, but it is something that you might want to check out before you actually take the board home. There's also a little bit of a crack in the top of this board, something else that you may also want to be mindful of before you take it home because if there's a crack in it and it is out in the elements, then there is a chance that that crack will expand. So I'm just going along this project from top to bottom, rolling out the paint. We are going to see how long it takes to do this. We're gonna speed this up and we'll come back when we're done. Okay, so we've gotten one layer done on our surface. You can see that it's a little bit dusty. We will definitely want to do at least one more layer, if not two, on top of this so that we can get a really nice, bold, white base coat. It is a little bit of a workout when you are doing your background with the roller, but it takes a lot less time than when you are doing it with a polyfoam brush. So when you're adding your paint 
to your roller. You do want to be mindful that you add your paint and then you roll it off on the side of your palette. We really like to use palette paper with the rollers because we have more room to roll. If you do not roll it the entire way around, then you're going to notice when you start painting that you have little areas that look like you have jumped. And that's because the paint was on a portion of the roller, but not on the whole roller. So you can just go back through and roll that through. You might notice that we haven't had to add paint to our roller very often because it soaks up so much paint when you're rolling it that you can just start applying a little bit more pressure and more paint will come out. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this up and show you. Now we have two layers of paint on our tall porch sign. I'm actually gonna do one more just so I can get it a little bit more bold. You will wanna let this dry completely before you start doing the stenciling on the background. Now there are a couple places that I see that have a little bit where you can still see the background, the, the wood grain just a little, and the white didn't go over top of it completely, that could be for a couple different reasons. It could be that there wasn't enough paint on your roller, or it could be you didn't let it dry completely between layers, and the paint started sticking together and moving around. So we're going to go ahead and put this into a plastic baggie. I'm gonna roll the plastic baggie up. We use the kind that are just the flip top. We're gonna to roll it nice and tight, set it to the side here. And I'm going to blow dry the background of this. Okay, so how do you know when your background is dry? When it's wet, it's going to be a little bit sticky. You might get a little bit on your hands and it's also going to be cool. So when it's not cool to the touch anymore, that's how you know it's dry. Now. This piece of pine that we have actually has a lot of little holes in it from the knots. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do just a little bit of patching here. We're gonna take one of our dome brushes, put some paint on it, and then we are just going to tap it in to, to the holes. So then that it's not, it's not gonna be as dark and we're actually going to fill in those holes with a little bit of white paint. And then we're gonna take our poly foam brush and just brush a little bit of that extra paint off and smooth it out. Now we're also going to use our poly foam brush to fill in some of the spots that really didn't get as much of a background coat as what we had hoped for. Oh, this one is falling apart. So I'm gonna use this um, as a chance to talk to you about our poly foam brushes because this one actually is coming apart. So not all poly foam brushes, not all foam brushes are equal. A lot of the foam brushes that you'll get, um, we've gotten some from the dollar store and from other craft stores, and they go up here, they have this wood dowel, and the dowel ends where the foam begins. But with our brushes, you can see that the dowel actually goes almost halfway up into the foam, and then there's a piece of plastic. So when the dowel ends here, and you start painting with it, then it's really floppy and messy. But ours, let me show you a good one. Well, you can see that when we put paint on it, that it still has some stiffness to it and just the tip of it is what actually moves. So this is also a good way to cover up some of those spots and fill in some of those holes so that they're not as dark. And we have used the poly foam brushes in the past to base coat the boards. And you can most certainly do that, it just takes quite a bit longer due to not being able to cover as much area and not being able to keep as much paint on your brush. But they're really good for going back and doing some spot checks and fixing some areas that maybe you don't feel like 
are even or that you want to do touch-ups on. The polyfoam brushes are also really good for painting your edges. You can use the tip of the brush and just go along the edge. Or you can also use, this is one of our favorite things, it's called an ink sweeper. And you can put your fingers inside it and dab it in your paint and then just go along the edge just like this. And it's about the same size, so then you're not gonna have to worry about getting bleeding over on one side or the other. All right, I've about got this to where we're happy with it. The base coating is what takes the longest with the tall porch sign. The painting of the sign itself isn't actually something that takes a long time. The tall porch stencils are actually some of our simplest stencils. They'll just normally have a word, a couple words, maybe one design, but the base coating is what's gonna take you the longest. So let me hit this one more time with the blow dryer and then we'll be ready to paint. So there is one part of this surface that I want to talk to you about is we have a really large knot right here up toward the top. So even though we put several coats of white paint on it, it is still showing through. So if that is something you do want to cover up, there is a way that you could do that. You could base the whole project with a light gray color and then do white over top of it. It's the same thing we do when we are painting with reds or we're painting with colors that we want to pop over top of other colors, um, light colors on top of black that might not really show well. So if that little piece, if you have something like that on one of your projects and it is bothering you, then you can do a couple coats of another color, like a light gray, and then paint the white over top of it. Okay, so now it's time to get to stenciling. Today we are doing a summer tall porch sign. It says, hello summer, and it has a super cute little flip flops down at the bottom. Let me show you how to lay out your tall porch stencil from Studio R12. So we do something really cool on these. We're going to lay it out, and there are different portions of the letters and designs on our stencils that are etched into the stenciled, the mylar, so that you can see exactly where it's supposed to go once you lay it out. Now, you'll want to lay it out before you start painting. Some of the designs, you'll start at the top and paint down, and other ones you'll start at the bottom and paint to the top. It really just depends on the design. We try to do it all one way, but some designs work a little bit better if you start at the bottom. So with this one, we have the S and the U and then a little portion of the M cut out here along with a portion of the hello. So we'll paint this and then we will be able to line up our middle portion of the stencil with the painted portion of the M. Go ahead and do the middle and then the bottom of the E here aligns with the top of this stencil so that we'll know where to line up at the bottom of the stencil. So let's go ahead and pull this down. And we're going to put this on here and line up this top one right along with the edge of our surface. So when you get these and you ask for a six foot by 12 inch board. Know that sometimes it's gonna be a little bit bigger than 12 inches, sometimes it's gonna be a little smaller than 12 inches. So you might have a little bit of overlap or you might have a portion of the board that is going to be a little bit bigger than your stencil. That's okay. You can just make sure that you're lining it up straight and keeping the stencil lined up the whole time. All right, so we are going to get some tape and tape our stencil down here. I'm gonna do it over top of the edge here just so that I can make sure it doesn't go anywhere. All right, now this is a project that you're going to want a lot of brushes if you are going to do as many colors as what we are. So we have the S-U-M-M-E-R and the flip-flop and hello. So we're gonna need eight brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and get those all out now. And we are going to use 
the biggest brush that we have, which is the 5 8 dome brush. Man, guys, these are really wonderful brushes. One of the brushes I was using earlier to fill in the spots because I didn't want to use one of our really good ones. Like, take a look at this. Look how flat that is. This is what a lot of people start stenciling with is a flat brush. And when you use a flat brush, the whole brush touches the project when you are stenciling. So when you're pushing it down, the whole brush is on there and it can cause bleeding when you are stippling. So we like the dome brush because you can see that the whole brush is domed. And when you are stenciling with it, when you are swirling or when you are stippling, only a portion of the dome brush actually touches the project, which is key to not bleeding under. All right, so let's do, let me get these lined up here because I got them a little out of order when I was moving things around. Do this. We'll do, okay, I think I'm good to go now. So we're gonna start with the teal. Let's talk about a little bit of stencil basics. We're going to put our paint on our palette. And then we are going to pick up, just get a little bit of paint off from our, um, our blob and come over to our paper towel. You don't wanna skip the paper towel. We're gonna to do 15 swirls on the paper towel just to offload a bit of the paint. When you are trying to see if you have enough or too much or enough paint on your brush, you're gonna come over to your hand and you should be able to paint a little bit on your hand and it's just really dusty. If it's wet and goopy, that means you have too much paint on your brush. So then we're gonna to come to our project and we are going to start swirling. There are a couple of different ways that you can stencil. You can swirl or you can do what we like to call stipple, which is a tapping motion. We really like the swirling method because it helps prevent the bleeding under. You can see here that this is just a little light and dusty and it's getting a little more dusty as we go because there's not much paint on our brush. But we can get this whole S lightly dusted with just one layer of paint. And then when you swirl, there's so little paint on your brush and it's such a thin layer that it dries almost immediately and you can go back in and start your second layer of swirling. So something about stenciling, stenciling is a layers game. And we get people who message us and they say, we can't quit bleeding under. What are we doing wrong? It is either because you have too much paint on your brush, maybe you forgot to come over here and swirl off, or it could be because of your pressure. I am not putting a lot of pressure on this. I'm just doing a light swirl, going over to the edges, not really pushing very hard. Or it could be because of the applicator that you're using. That's why we recommend the dome brush. Okay, so now we have our second layer on here. And I'm going to do one more layer and I'm gonna do this layer with a stipple so I can show you how to do that. So stipple is just a padding motion. I love the stipple because it covers a lot of area in a short amount of time, but it also can give you some extra bleeding under because when you are patting it, you're pushing the paint up into the brush. So there is more paint on your brush, even if you swirl off. But stippling is really good for big areas like I'm doing now. So it's good for helping get an even coverage on your project. Okay, so now we have the S done and we're gonna do a little peek here so we can take a look at it and look how awesome that S is. It pops right off of our project. It's beautiful, we don't have any little bleeding areas. So we're good on the S, it's super easy. It didn't take long at all. Now we're gonna go through and paint the rest of the letters 
and I'm gonna show you some things along the way. So we're going to put our dome brush in our water. We keep a water bucket here on our paint station so that when we're painting, we can just throw our brushes in the water. We do have a couple of videos on how to wash your brushes. That's super important for keeping your brushes in good condition so you don't have to keep buying them over and over again. So next we're gonna go with our pink. And I can already tell there's a lesson in this pink. This pink is not something that we use very often. So I'm going to, oh actually, this pink is brand new. Take a look at that. So I did not shake this one up. I shook up the teal that I just used. This one I did not shake and let me show you when I pour that out, you can see that the paint has separated a little bit and right along the edge there, there is a really dark pink layer. So you'll want to make sure that you shake up your paints very, very, very well before you start actually painting with them because if they're not mixed very well, then there is a bigger chance of your bleeding under because you have some of that really watery mixed in with it. So now we're gonna to go to our second letter, which is the U, and we're just gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna get some paint and we are going to start swirling. Okay, so when I went back to start swirling my second layer of the pink, once I started swirling, I could start seeing swirl marks in my U. So what that means is that first layer of paint isn't quite dry yet. So I'm gonna put this under here, hide it in my little paper towel to keep it wet, and then I'm going to go over to my blow dryer and I'm going to blow dry between the layers of this so I can make sure it's nice and dry. All right, let's try this again. Much better this time, the paint's not moving around. We're getting a little bit darker of a layer here. So I wanna show you here what it looks like, the difference between one layer and two with the pink. So you can see that this layer is just one layer. You can still see kind of some of the white through the background. And then the second layer you can see is a little bit darker. So we're gonna lay this back on here. Now, one thing that you have to make sure you do if you peek between your layers is line it back up correctly. I was not a peeker for a very long time because I hated lining up the stencils, but if you peek, you can catch mistakes. So we'll show you what that means here in a few minutes. I'm gonna go back through and blow dry one more time and then we'll get our last layer of pink on here. Okay, so our U is done. We are going to let that dry and we are going to come over to the left side and start working on our hello. And we're going to do that in a black. We're gonna make it nice and bold. And the beauty of these stencils is you could just keep it with summer. You wouldn't have to paint the hello. You could put a little design over there. That's what's so fun about stenciling is that they are so versatile. And we're gonna show you something here in a few minutes to show you how you could add a little pop to your projects and make it even a little more than what we're actually sending you. So I'm going to actually not swirl off on this one because I wanna show you what happens if you don't. I just picked up my paint and I'm going to come over here and start swirling. And you can see just by looking at it from the top that guys, this is really wet and goopy and oh, it's just messy looking. It's so messy. So let me show you a couple of ways that we can fix this. I'm gonna remove this stencil 
completely because this might take a couple minutes. But this is exactly why we like to peek so that we can be sure that we're not making big boo-boos. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the um, in the paint, the, the paintbrush bucket so we can spend a little time here. So there are some different ways that you can clean this up. With this one, I'm gonna go to the most last resort thing that you're gonna to want to do. And that would be to pat it off, get some of the excess paint off of there, and then just go ahead and rebase coat it. So I'm gonna pat this off. I'm going to blow dry it so that we don't have any residue. Okay, and then we are going to grab one of our other foam brushes. We're gonna put a little bit more white paint on our background. And then we're just gonna paint right over it. So if you make a mistake and you are unhappy with it and you hate it and you just don't like it at all, it's not the end of the world. You can go back and fix it. So I'm gonna paint a couple of layers over top of here and then we'll come back and show you how to paint this black one the correct way and a couple of little tips and tricks that you can do if you do make mistakes and you don't have to go this whole route. Okay, so problem solved, it's okay. You can see that this, this was an L, this L is Co coated over, I think we put four coats of paint on top of it. We used our poly foam brush and we dabbed it and then spread it through. So it is very faint, you still can see it, but we are going to come back on here and we are going to paint it again. So it's okay that you can still see it. But we do want to, before we put this stencil back down, there is a lot of paint on this stencil and we want to make sure that we get some of this excess paint off because if not, we are going to have a chance of getting extra black paint on our project that we don't want. So if we weren't filming right now, what I would do is I would just go to the sink and wash all of the paint off of the stencil because there is a little bit of it on the, black, on the back but it's not coming off of my hand, so we should be okay. But it's okay to stop and go wash your stencil, go clean up. We all make mistakes while we are painting, and that's why we like to do these and to make our mistakes so that we can show you exactly what to do if that happens. So let's get this line back up right where it should be. We're gonna tape it back down, maybe. We're gonna tape it back down and then we are going to go back to our hello. So we are lined up, we're gonna get another brush, come back into our black. This time we're not gonna to forget to swirl off. We're gonna come over here and then we are gonna start swirling. So you can already tell by looking at this, there's such a difference in what we're doing now compared to what we did the last time. The last time it looked like it had several coats on it, even though it was only one and it was really thick and goopy and yucky. And this time we're going to get through the whole end portion of the word with just one layer. So I do wanna show you another mistake that can be made. So this surface is bigger than this stencil. So what if I'm not paying attention and I do what's called ghosting and now there's a little bit of black over here. Don't worry, we can fix it. You can do a couple of things. We like to keep a little water bottle on our paint table. So you can paint or you can spray it off. You can get a paper towel and you can just wipe the paint right off. But our favorite thing to do is use our click eraser, which is a PVC eraser. You get it a little wet. If you try it dry, nothing will happen. But if you get it wet, then we can come over here and voila, the ghosting is erased. And now we just have our little white surface. So this is one of the perks of um, peeking and checking your project because you only have a few minutes until that paint cures for you to fix mistakes with water. 
So about five minutes after you do your painting, you'll be able to go back and fix it with water. After that, you'll either have to go in with a round brush and you could get your round brush and you could get some white paint and you can just paint right over that and do some touch ups or you might have to go back and base coat the whole thing like we had to do with this portion earlier. So I've gotten used to peeking because of that. Okay, so now we have our two layers of black and it's still a little dusty. So we're going to do one more layer. We are going to stipple it so we can get this black really bold like the other bits of our letters. So now it's time to peek and that is so nice and pretty and bold and look you can't even tell where we made the mistake before because we covered it up we painted over top of it and it just looks nice and smooth and not goopy and not all kinds of messy so problem solved now let's take a look at our m because with our first M, you're gonna paint the first portion of it with stencil number one, and then we're gonna to go to stencil number two. Let's see, let's do this, you. Let's do this in yellow. We're gonna shake up our paint, put a little bit of it on here. Throw away some of our paper towels. We go through a lot of paper towels, but it is so worth it to not have that bleeding under in that mess. If you've been following us for a while over here on our YouTube channel, you might have noticed that we have quite a few videos on tall porch stencils and there is a reason for that. That is one of the most popular search terms that people come to us for is looking how to paint tall porch stencils. And over on studior12.com on our website, we have more than 6,000 stencil titles and most of them come in several different sizes. We have some teeny, teeny, tiny all the way up to jumbo including these six foot signs. We also have four foot signs, so you could do a little bit smaller ones. And we have them for all seasons, so you can paint the front and backs of your boards and have them for the different seasons, for the different holidays, and they're super easy to store. You can store them underneath your bed. They lay nice and flat. You can store them standing up in a closet. You can store them under your couch even. So these are really great designs, the fun things to put on your porch, fun things to gift to others. All right, we are, I think, done with this portion of the M. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this off. I'm gonna let that dry for a second, and we are going to grab our second stencil that goes along with this. I can show you how to line this up. Actually, I'm gonna dry this really quick because if we're laying one stencil over top of another, we wanna make sure it's nice and dry so it doesn't smear our paint. Okay, so now we are able to use the etched portion of our stencil. It's not cut out all of the way, but it is etched. To We have a little etch here through this portion of them and then we do actually have a cutout for this other portion so that we can see exactly where we need to line this up. We can also line it up with the L in hello. So we give you several different places to look to get your stencil lined up perfectly. I think we are good to go here. We're gonna tape it down one more time and get back to painting.
Okay, we finally got this beauty painted and I am in love. The colors just pop. I mean, this thing really screams summer, but there is something else that you could do to make it maybe pop a little bit more. Go through some of your old stencils. The beauty of stencils is that you can mix and match and add and take away and do anything you want to make the magic happen on your project. So we just grabbed some random stencils from around the office for things that you could add to your projects. So one of them is our really pretty summer flowers. You could add some of these up in the corners. You could add them on top of the flip flops. You know how sometimes flip flops have little designs on it. Ooh, you could also put a floral, little floral wooden embellishment right here. How cute would that be? You could also, this is a hat for a gnome, but I love these polka dots. You could come on here and put these on top of your letters and you could make your letters polka dot with other bright colors. That would be super fun. We also have all shapes and sizes of embellishment stencils. So these pattern stencils, there's everything from hearts. There are some super cute big dots and little dots. There are so many different options that you could use with the stencils that you currently have just to kind of change up the design and really make it your own. So now that our project is finished, our stencil is removed, time to take a look at it, make sure you love it. If you see some things that maybe you missed when you were peeking, when you were erasing, now's the time to grab your round brush. This is just a really fine brush what I did with it was I grabbed my palette paper, I put some white paint on the palette paper and just grabbed a little bit and then came over to each individual place that was a little bit messy and just free handed and cleaned it up just really carefully to just make sure I had the added little finishing touches on it. Speaking of finishing touches, we always like to go back over our projects with sandpaper. So this is a really fine grit, it's really smooth. You could even use a brown paper bag if you have one of those and just go across your project. And what this does is if there are any ridges, once you're stenciling, you might get a little bit of ridges where you paint them. This just knocks back the ridge a little bit and makes it really smooth. And you'll want to do this with the grain of the wood. Now you will want to be mindful of if you have used the sanding block before. So this one has a little bit of black paint. That is something we have sanded before. And there are now a little bit of spots on our project where this old paint rubbed off. So always be mindful if you are sanding, especially on white and you wanna keep it nice and bright and clean to get a new piece of sandpaper. You could also get a really rough grit sandpaper if you would want to make this project look really weathered, like it's been out in the summer sun through all of the elements. You can chip back some of the edges, maybe come right down here through the letters and make it really rustic and warm. So if you're painting this sign, you're probably painting it for your porch, right? These are porch signs. You will want to make sure that you add a polyurethane varnish to your sign before you put it outside. Now, when you start your project, after you cover up your knots, you can go ahead and add a layer of the matte varnish and then paint over it. Or you can wait until you are all finished. We either use the Rust-Oleum polyurethane, but, or, the, Dur the DuraClear from Deco Arts, the DuraClear matte varnish. We always use matte on outdoor projects so that they don't get a little bit of a glare in the sun. With this one, we will put it out on our palette paper and we will use a roller just like we did with our base coat, or you can use a poly foam brush in this polyurethane. You will want to do the top, the sides, the top and bottom of it and the back of it as well so that all four sides are protected when it's out on your porch.
If you like this video and you want to see more stencil painting tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the Studio R12 Stencils YouTube channel and ring the bell so you can be notified anytime we add new videos.